As many of you know, I left Pine Valley a long time ago to work with Doctors Without Borders. And I got nabbed. I got kidnapped. Only me, right? I uh, actually thought I was done. I, I was it. But Zach had another plan. He set up a rescue mission, and he got my butt back home. Now, you would think that I would be grateful, because the man saved my life, but the truth is I wanted to be back in Africa doing my work. See, the thing is, I, I had a reality check, and I really was eternally grateful to Zach for that, because if I didn't have that, I wouldn't have met my beautiful wife, and we never would have had our son, so. So you're right when you say that Zach was a man of few words, but when he chose to speak to you, he used the right ones. And from where I stand, that's really all that matters. I had the good fortune to work with Zach on more than one occasion. He was truly an amazing man. He helped me save the love of my life, and in turn, I got to help him save his. He was smart, he was to the point, but above all, he was loyal. There was no one else on earth I'd rather be in the trenches with. And I mean no one. Zack Slater was one of Myrtle's most favorite people. And anybody that's okay by Myrtle is more than okay by me. I had a friendship that was, wasn't just special, it was sacred. And when Myrtle passed, she left a mighty big void, especially for Zack. So I hope that he and Murder up there having a heck of a good old time. I can see the two of them right now, can't you? Sipping Bloody Mary's Gavin away. <laughs> they were a match made in heaven, yeah, literally. When my father died, everything fell apart. I broke my sobriety. And I ran from everyone and everything I knew. But lucky for me, I ran right into Zach's casino. And Zach recognized me right away. Oh, I don't mean my celebrity. I mean, he recognized the pain I was going through. He recognized the pain that I was doing everything I knew how to cover up. And he didn't ask me any questions, and he didn't lecture me to death. Zach just kept it short and sweet. Well, actually, maybe not that sweet. He said, you are a complete waste of sequins and feathers. <laughs> and it's just what I needed to hear, and just who I needed to hear it from. Zach saved my life. Zach uh, was amazing in that bomb shelter. Me, I was completely freaking out, but he kept my mind off of everything. The snakes, my claustrophobia, the horrifying fact that we were running out of air. How did he do that? Well, it boiled down to three things. Getting me drunk, giving me detailed play-by-plays of hockey games, and telling me really, really bad jokes. And the worst one was, uh, did you hear about the red ship and the blue ship that collided? The crews were marooned. <laughs> I can hardly say the punchline. <laughs> oh, yeah. But Zach was tough, really tough. Definitely not a guy you wanted as your enemy, but when he was in your corner, he was there, 100%. We shared some intense moments, but the night Gabby was born topped them all. There in the middle of a tornado, there's debris everywhere, and most normal people would have been terrified, and I was, I guess. But deep down, I knew it would be okay because Zach was there. A lot 
of people in this room. Uh, he saved your lives. And he saved mine, too. But he also gave me life. It's the most precious gift there is. He gave me Gabby. We, um, we certainly had our ups and downs. That's kind of putting it mildly. I mean, there were, uh, many times where we couldn't even be in the same room at the same time, never mind call each other friends, but, uh, then Spike was born. And Zach had my son's back from the very beginning, from be before the very beginning, actually. He, he refused to let the doctors deliver Spike prematurely because he was afraid he wouldn't make it. He had so much faith in you. He knew that you were going to be okay, that you were going to pull through. And you did. And, and so did our son. And over the years, I, um... I called Zach a lot of things, and, um, a lot of them, you know, not, not so nice. Most of them I, I'd wish I could, I could take back. But I was always proud to share the title of Spike's father with him, and I always will be. those words to you, I could not believe they were coming out of my mouth. I mean, I was so sure I would never say them again. Because love, it never lasted. So I stopped trying. Or at least I tried to stop trying. But you wouldn't let me. Crazy, considering you were just as scared as I was. Yeah, you heard me. I called you scared. You decided I was worth the risk. And you convinced me to... to take that risk with you. Thank you. So, we held hands, and we took a leap. We got married against all odds. You helped bring Spike safely into this world against all odds. You gave Ian the strength to keep fighting to survive against all odds. Everything we did was against all odds, but Somehow, we made it work. Was it easy? No. <laughs> but my God, Zach, it was worth it. Someone asked me recently what I thought you would want. Wrong. And to, to keep on going. And I will. Because I have to, for the boys. But I won't think of you as gone forever. <laughs> You've just taken another journey across the sea. And I will be here, waiting for you. <laughs> I will never stop loving you.
Your mother and I hadn't seen each other for quite a while. I didn't know she was pregnant. She came looking for me at the mine site. There was the explosion. By the time I got to her, she was in shock. And she was in labor. There was no way of getting her out. So I delivered you, myself, in the mine. You were in a big hurry to come out. I held you up so that she could see you. And she smiled. <laughs> I've never seen anybody so happy to see the baby. She was smiling when she died. She was looking at you. Time was here, and now it's gone. And I want you to know you'll be right in my heart. After I go, don't embrace me too long. My tears wanna fly. You and I still be. Always. Only you.